this is one of the reasons I wanted to get out camping because it's one of my new bits of kit one of quite a few new bits of kit so is this <laughs> this is we see to summit sleep mat flex tail pump, rocks aft a lot oh. <laughs> that's not helping Jack, move move What am I doing? Wrong way, Jack. What am I doing? I put it on the wrong way. I'll be there going Jack. That's better. Good <laughs> of me. A flex tail pump is a game changer. Pumps you're pumping your mat up pronto. Although you do have to get the nozzle on the right end for it to work. Luckily Dave's got one as well and he showed me how to work it. <laughs> That's my bedroom. And Dave's got the luxury bedroom. Dave's view is pretty spectacular. Get out of the way lad. It is. Thanks, Dave. Like an expert, resident. We are in Haunted Buffy. I briefly mentioned it the day before. This is the first place that quadruple quadruplets are they called? Yeah. <laughs> what from triplets anyway? <clears throat> the first quadruplets that were ever born in Wales were in this house. All four of them died. Now, obviously, all four of them are gonna die if they were in the 1800s. <laughs> because they won't still be alive. How soon did they die after they were born then? I need to get a We can't, we've got a fucking signal in this, in this house because the stone walls are so thick. I read about it before we came and it said, this is a haunted bothy. So time is cracking on now. And we're just waiting for the ghosties to turn up to try and calm o Oscar. Can't try and calm Jack down because he's been a dick. I think Jack's been seeing him all night. <laughs> then maybe that's what it is. It is. In 1856, Isaac and Margaret Hughes lived at Nancydion with their two children. In February of that year, they gave birth to the first recorded quadruplet in Wales. But within three weeks, seven members of that family died, leaving only the father. Visitors to the Bothy have reported a motherly presence, and if you read the visitor's book, you'll see some of those reports. So if you're going camping somewhere and you're taking all your kit in a rucksack, take tortilla wraps instead of bread, because 
they're not going to flatten, are they? They've got sausages on there. I was going to say I'll take you down to the water source where you can get your own water while the wind's died down because we've had a lot of wind up here. It's picked up again. You can see just how close this water source is to the house. It's 30 second walk. So as long as you've got a water filter, you've got water on tap basically. Lots and lots of it. Gorgeous raw water as well. Really nice and clear water. So I mentioned they had a few nice bits of new kit. I, I literally bought most of it about three or four months ago, but we got a dog and it put a, a halt on some of my plans. It's got a new rucksack, big Fjall Raven, Keb 52, I think it is. Comfy as anything. I had a heavy weight on yesterday and it was really comfortable. My mat, the Cetus Summit Etherlite XT Extreme, I think it's called. Mega comfy. Especially with my nice two pillow set up. And then my little pump as well. Um, flex tail tiny pump too, I think it is. There's the dog. It was amazing. So I'm gonna be a Jack, no. I'm gonna be using that type of stuff a lot more in the future. You got a fireplace here. Help yourself, Jack. Yeah. You've got this beautiful granite worktop in the kitchen. Go through here. You've got a sawhorse. Cut chopping your logs. And then some bits for the the work parties. So you have one of the bedrooms. All of these bedrooms are simply just empty wooden floorboards. Make sure that's shut properly. We didn't sleep in this one. So this one, comfortably sleep eight people or so with a view out to the front stunning we go across the landing we've got another large bedroom with again a view to the front of the property stunning this is where Dave slept here And then you've got the room where I slept. So this has got a window out to the side of the property. And a window to the rear. If you're anything like Sarah, you might not like this place. There's quite a few cobwebs, although we haven't seen a single spider. No evidence of mice either. It's a little bit drafty, but overall it's pretty well sound insulated anyway. 
And this is the main living room. It's got a big wooden table here with a decent sized window for your view. Some bits that people have left behind, like gas and noodles and oil and salt and stuff. A fireplace with a nice little burner. A bench in the corner. There's a load of seats. And then bench here as well. So we had all our stuff hanging up here just in case there was any mice. But it was all fine. This is the big burly pack that I've recently got. It's buggy, amazing. I'm gonna head off shortly. Quite a few beers last night. So we had a bit of a slow morning this morning. Went to bed at two o'clock. I think it was up at five for a wee and then up at seven because Jack was ready to get up. <laughs> so we packed our bags now. Just can't let go of this place. You stand outside there when the wind's not too strong. It's a, uh, it draws you in, makes you want to stay even longer. So I will be back here, hopefully not too soon because it might take the edge off it. But definitely be coming back at some point. If you want to reset your mind, come here. Above you, eh? That's the end of an amazing trip. For those who were wondering, no, Sarah hasn't put a lot of weight on and gained four foot in height. That was my mate Dave. Sarah doesn't work. We went up to a boffy. It's about a. Uh, it's about an hour's walk from the car park to the boffy, so you have to take everything with you. You walk through a farm, up a few hills, through the forest, to the boffy, and it's it's just this mid Wales area. I think we're a couple of miles inland from Aberystwyth. It's, it's quality here. It's, the weather helps. You know, we had a bit of grim weather yesterday on the way up, but the weather today is stunning. Surrounded by little tiny baby lambs and everything. The boffy, it's very, very basic, but it's it's outstanding, especially since it's free of charge. It's, you know, these boffies are, are, are maintained by a group of people free of charge who are all volunteers. And as long as you continue to look after it and leave it in as good a state, if not better than when you arrived, which we did, then they'll be, continue to be in use. All I would say is, the boffy that we stayed in, someone had left a few carrier bags of litter. We couldn't carry all that out. We carried our own carrier bag full of litter out. It was like empty baked bean tins and all kinds, which is a bit of a shame, really. It was a little bit scruffy when we got there, so we tidied it up a little bit. And there was some more wet wood that you wouldn't be able to burn, so we got rid of it. Yeah, it was just a, it was just a, a perfect opportunity to meet up with my mate Dave, test some kit out that I haven't used yet, even though I've had it for a few months and just go and empty our minds. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. No idea what we're doing in the next video, but it's likely to be outdoors. Bye.